for that discomfort so that we can practice it here in this little science lab of a yoga mat. So you might put your phone on silent, turn off notifications, at least for these next 10 minutes. Huh? We'll come to seated. You can be in a chair or on the ground. I like sitting cross-legged uh, in Sukhasana, easy sitting pose. That might be on top of a block for you or on top of a folded blanket. Chest comes over hips, head over heart. Kitty's next. Good morning. Welcome. You're just in time. We're just sitting down for meditation, for a grounding. <clears throat> Hands come to rest on the lap, either palms down to ground down or palms up to give and receive energy if you feel you've got a little extra to give today. Eyes can close or lower to a soft gaze just ahead of your legs without looking at anything in particular. And we'll start with three cleansing breaths in through the nose, shoulders rise up towards the ears and the exhale, it's an audible sigh and the shoulders drop away. And just allow the breath to continue at a natural pace. In and out through the nose if that's available. And we'll just take a moment here to arrive. Let go of everything that came before and everything that's to come up after. And just become present to yourself here in this moment in this space. Begin to allow sounds into your awareness. Perhaps the sound of passing traffic or singing birds outside your window. or the sound of a pet or roommate shuffling in the room next door. Allowing all sounds in all part of this experience Notice the temperature of the air on your skin. The weight where your body makes contact with the ground below you. The weight of your hands on your knees. And begin to scan your body from head down towards toes. Like passing through an x-ray machine, scanning for any places of tightness or sensitivity. Any restlessness or fidgeting. I'm just taking a note to work into those spaces that call out for your attention throughout your practice here today. And we'll shift away from the Anamaya Kosha 
body level to pranamaya kosha energetic level just notice where are you in this moment on a scale of one to ten one being exhausted fatigued ready to crawl into bed ten being so full of energy it's hard to sit still and moving that awareness up to the breath. No need to change it, just observe. Inhalations, exhalations, whatever space in between. Moving that awareness up to the mind, Manomaya Kosha, allowing thoughts and feelings to arise. And without engaging with them, observe at a distance, no commentary necessary, like a movie being projected onto a screen, the story goes on. And just notice what are the quality of the thoughts today? Do they have a positive or a negative tilt to them? Are they ruminating on the past or attempting to predict the future? Not right or wrong, not good or bad, just something to notice. We'll bring that attention back down to the breath. This time actively expanding the breath. Every inhale sips in a little more air. And every exhale lets something more go. Anytime the mind wanders off, we can always anchor back with the breath, even internally repeating. Inhale, exhale, as a silent internal mantra. Inhale fills belly like a balloon, expanding, inflating. Exhale, releases belly button in towards spine, deflating, actively pulling in. Inhale, fills belly and ribs, expanding out to the sides in 360 degrees. Exhale, releases ribs and belly. Inhale, fills belly, ribs, and chest. Air filling all the way up to the collarbones. And exhale, releases chest, ribs, belly. Continuing like this, filling from bottom to top. Exhaling top to bottom. Really focusing on that Direction of the breath, three part breath, Dirga Pranayam. And to the best of your ability, allowing the breath to be in and out just through the nose. 
Breathing, inhaling through the nose, prepares the air for the lungs. It naturally moistens and warms up the air, making it easier on the chest. Allow space between top and bottom teeth as the jaw relaxes. On your next exhale, release any effort from the breath, just returning to a natural breath pace, perhaps still in and out through the nose. We like to continue practicing that. It's a recommendation. We'll bring our hands to meet at heart center, palms pressed together in Anjali Mudra. No space between the fingers and the thumbs are pressed into the sternum. Consider here setting an intention or a dedication for your practice. It might be the sankalpa, the intention you set at the beginning of the year, you've been working with all month, or it could be something new. Whatever inspires you, your reason for being here today. And we'll seal that intention with the sound of OM. So OM is a seed sound, so it's a beginning creation type sound. You're invited to chant with me. Just listen. <laughs> we'll start with the cleansing breath. Allow the hands to release to the lap, chin drops towards chest. And on an inhale, right ear rolls over towards right shoulder. Exhaling, chin to chest. And left ear towards left shoulder. Just allow the head to roll side to side. Opening up the space. Eyes can stay closed for this. And the next time the head rolls through center, bring it up to neutral and just begin to roll the shoulders forward. So we're just gently waking up the body, even if it's nighttime by you. It's waking up the body to movement. Good morning, Franco. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Megan. Facebook. And rolling the shoulders back, beginning to open up the chest. Let's work on coming to stillness in the in the shoulders. Let's work on some of our neck resiliency. So I'm going to turn to the side so you have a better view of the movement. You're welcome to stay facing the screen. We're seated up tall. No movement in the uh, shoulders or hips. You can do this from a chair as well. I know some of you uh, practice uh, in your chairs, so this movement works for you. Chin tucks down towards chest, and then I'm trying to bring my nose to the ground using just neck muscles, and then all the way, all the way forward towards the wall in front of me. And I can't go any further. Go up towards the sky, 
all the way back, and then chin tucks back in towards chest. So I'm making a circle with my nose, going to the full range of motion of my cervical spine. That's my neck. I'm just smoothing it out to the best of your ability. Temptation here is to move the shoulders, but just let them be relaxed down by the sides. This is just a head and neck movement. change directions. Now leading with the chin. Chin's going forward, 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 and then like a scoop, it goes down and pulls back in. Head comes up. Chin up and forward, forward, forward until it can't go any further. Back down. And it pulls in. Going nice and slow. There's no rush this movement. The slower, the smoother, the better. Opening up new mobility in the neck. Becoming familiar with the muscles that operate there. Back to center. Good morning, Mom Furious. Salutations. Namaste. We're just working on some neck resiliency here, relieving some tension in the neck and building up some new uh, muscle awareness for it. So fingers come to touch the edge of your jawbone, mandible, just right below the ear. Still seated up tall. Bring the fingers just about an inch away. Then we're gonna slide the head from side to side to touch the fingers. So temptation here is to lift the shoulders to help. Now dance class. Let the shoulders just be melted away. We're bringing the head. Second temptation to turn the head. We are not nodding the head. There's no no shaking. It's just a slide. If you feel yourself moving forward to make this happen, just bring it, bring your head a little bit back. So this can be a little frustrating. It's like a mental thing that's frustrating about it. Just bring your fingers a little bit closer. Touch, touch, touch. And of course we're multitasking. We're breathing fully here. Sometimes when we're trying something new, or something challenging, we hold our breath. But when the breath ends, the pose ends. Three, two, one. All right, shake that out a little. <laughs> and inhale, arms sweep up overhead. Exhale, right arm releases down, left arm reaches over for a side bend. And the left arm sweeps in front of the body, right hand follows. Just making a big organic circle in this direction. Following the breath in to rise. Out to bend. And there's really no wrong way of doing this. We're just waking up the spine. A little free movement. And kind of like press into any places during that initial body scan that called out for your attention. If you had some like lower back things show up or some like left shoulder things show up, this is kind of a nice opportunity to kind of press into it, see what's going on. And then we'll change directions. Going over to the left, now the right arm uh, leads, left arm follows. As fast or slow as feels good for you. I like pressing all the way to the edge of my flexibility, not going any further since it's so early in class. But just 
just enough to like wake up that body part. So we'll bring it back to center. Woo. Send the legs out in front. Spread and scrunch the toes. Roll out the ankles. Change directions. So this early part of class, we were really just moving pretty freely, pretty loosely, uh, or basically taking like a full body like diagnostic, like what's going on? Are there anything? Is there anything that like needs to be careful of, or we want to address during like the more intense part of practice? When we bend in the knees, feet come nice and wide, uh, maybe mat's distance apart, and just drop the knees left and right, left and right. The feet are far enough away that when my inner knee drops, it doesn't land on top of the foot. I just do that by keeping the legs nice and wide. So just waking up the hips. And the next time the knees fall over to the right, we'll bring the hands to frame that knee and come into our tabletop pose. Just grab the chat. So hands below shoulders, knees below hips. There we go. Fingers are spread wide. On an inhale, belly drops, hips and chest rises for a cow pose. I'm pressing my hands down into the ground and pulling them back. Knees are pressing down and forward. So it's like I'm trying to scrunch my mat together, even though my hands and knees don't go anywhere. But we just use that extra grip to get even deeper into this arch in the spine, cow pose. And exhaling round in the spine, chin tucks towards chest. I'm pressing my hands down and forward, pressing my knees down and back. Like I'm gonna rip my mat apart, stretching it longer. Following your breath, in for cow pose, out for cat. Let the speed of your body be informed by the length of your breath. Now on your next exhale through cat pose, no rush to get there. More release that movement back to tabletop pose. Take the right leg uh, straight back behind you and then we'll bring the knee in towards the right shoulder. So that might be easier towards the elbow for you. It doesn't matter if it touches, it's just like reaching up and over like um. I don't know, fire hydrant pose, obviously not the ancient name for this. <laughs> but then we extend the leg back and bring it all the way over to the left, over the left foot. So it lands all the way to the left of you. And we're gonna look over the left shoulder, create a nice side body stretch. If you're not feeling the stretch, press your right hip to the right as you look over. So in on an exhale, we bring the knee in towards that tricep, towards the shoulder. Inhaling, we stretch, extending the leg out, dropping it over the left foot and looking over the left shoulder. We just got one more like that, just opening up this side body. Bring it back to center, tabletop pose. Left knee comes back, we bring it in towards the left shoulder, extend the leg long, 
bring it over to the right, toes touch down, I'm looking over the right shoulder. So I'm using the grip of the toes on the ground and the press of the hips towards the left to get that nice side body stretch. Exhaling, knee comes in towards shoulder. Inhaling, stretch it over to the right. We got one more like that. Nice, and bringing it back to center. We'll work on a little bit of wrist resiliency. So we've been doing a little bit each day instead of a lot on one day. So I'm gonna turn just so you can see what I'm actually doing, but however you're facing is just fine. We're in tabletop pose just like we were before. And then the hands turn to nine o'clock and three o'clock, right? So my middle fingers, if they were on an analog clock, would be facing out, three o'clock, nine o'clock. From here, fingers spread wide, and no matter what, the paw, the pause, sorry, Lucy just walked in. The pause. The palms don't leave the ground. And we're gonna shift side to side. Super slow. For a deeper stretch in the wrists, you can bring the hands closer. So the closer the wrists are to one another, the more intense the stretch. But it's a pretty intense stretch no matter where you're at. So we're going super, super slow. There's no glory in having uh, the most flexible wrists in the virtual room. Um, if anything, we want to avoid injury here. And why are we doing this anyway? We are doing this so that we can avoid injury in the future. We're building up the resiliency of the wrists, helping prevent carpal tunnel, this is uncomfortable and I'm moving a lot. I've been, no joke, working on these wrist uh, resiliency moves, movements for 17 years, one seven. So don't feel any sense of comparison or anything. It's like, you don't get a gold star for having really flexible wrists. But you will have a better chance of not breaking or spraining your wrist God forbid you do fall and stop yourself with hands. This undoes some of some of all the work that most of us do on a computer or doom scrolling, you know. We'll come over the right hand and we've got just a deep breath here. Bring it over the left to your edge. It is uncomfortable on a pain level. I'm probably like at an eight, maybe an eight and a half. Not enough to like black out or take your breath away, but it's intense. We bring it back to center. Turn the hands back to 12 o'clock. Well, tuck the toes under and we'll sit back on the heels. So now we're stretching out the top, uh, sorry, the bottoms of the feet by sitting back. Okay. Now this part, I just like, it's almost like um, you're washing your hands really intensely, but focusing on the wrists. Let's get some of the blood back into the hands. And then gently shake off water, nothing like crazy. Three, two, one. Awesome. Hands come down, tabletop pose, and then right foot steps up between the hands, left foot steps up between them, and we'll heel toe the feet out to the edges of the mat. So nice and wide if you're not on a mat. More apart than shoulder distance. Mm -hmm. We'll start to bend and extend one leg and then the other. Give the head a nod, yes. My knees are really bent, so there's no pain in my hamstrings or lower back. Shake your head, no. Grab opposite elbows 
create a frame for your head. You can give yourself a little rock side to side. So this is your first major forward fold. We'll call this ragdoll. So there's no, once again, wrong way of doing this. Just waking our bodies up to this shape. Slowing those uh, movements down to center. Big toes, uh, heel toe, the feet together. Big toes come to touch. A little space between the heels so the ankles don't knock together. And we'll roll up to stand. One vertebra at a time. Arms are relaxed. Heavy head comes up last, like the second half of a. what it's called but we'll inhale arms sweep up overhead when you get there set up brain melt exhale hands down to heart center and inhale arms sweep up overhead eyes follow fingertips exhale hands come down through heart center we forward fold we'll bend to the knees to protect the lower back Inhale, halfway lift, hands on shins. Crown of the head is reaching towards the front of the room, tailbone towards the back of the room, the back is flat, the gaze is down towards the ground, like making the number seven with your body. And then hands release down to the ground, we'll take a big step back with the right foot. Okay, so we're, here we are in this runner's lunge, with the right foot stepped back, left knee over left ankle. Stacking joints here to protect them, it's just more stable. Let's see it better there, yeah. And here I'm gonna press forward and back a couple times with my right heel to find a nice stretch in my calf, right calf muscle. If you're not feeling much of a stretch here, your knee might actually be a little bent. So see if there's more, if there, you can do more to straighten it. It's like you're bringing the back of your knee towards the ceiling. To make that happen, there's a little engagement on the front right thigh, the quadricep muscle. Nice. Okay. And here we'll work on a little bit of leg flexibility and strength. So with the heel pressing back as it was before, I'm going to press my right foot down and forward. So we were using the grip of the mat before, um, like during cat and cow. This is similar. So I'm going to be pressing my left heel down and forward and my right foot down and back. Like I'm trying to rip the mat apart, I'm trying to make it longer. So. Hands can come up onto the knee or they can stay on the ground for more stability. And we're just pulling away, 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 away. Full breath here. And then release to neutral. You can drop the knee down for a moment. And when I say drop, I mean gently, gently place. Okay. Back to uh, runner's lunge with the knee lifted, nice and straight, heel pressing back. And now we're gonna do the opposite, like we're trying to scrunch the feet together. We're gonna press the left foot down and back, and press the back foot down and forward. So I'm trying to bring this together, but also helps is left hips pulling back, right hips pulling forward. So for this one, it's easier for me to have my hands on the floor, whatever works for you is just fine. So I'm actively uh, using effort to bring the legs together, together, together. Full breath here. And then gently release that knee down to the ground. You might find that now after those two movements, there's like a little bit more space and you can actually tiptoe this right foot another inch or so back, maybe a centimeter. So this helps open up the hips. It's a, like in pole dancing, we, this is like how we would train to get into a full split, but it's super helpful in the yoga practice too. So we're just gonna go through one more round of that. 
knee lifts, and I'm pressing my right foot back, left foot forward. And I'm trying to rip them out apart, trying to get more distance between my feet. Press, 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 full breathing here. Remember, when things get difficult, we still breathe. Gently release the right knee down to the ground. Just give yourself a breath in relaxation. Knee lifts. And now for that second part, we're pulling the feet in towards one another like our feet want to touch. So it's actively pressing, bringing the feet towards one another. Press, press, press. Squeeze the hips in towards one another. Another full breath. Gently release that knee down to the mat. You might even find a little bit more space. All right, let's take advantage of the space created to come in by coming into Anjani Asana. So untuck the toes so the shoelace part of the foot's pressed into the ground. And yes, I did introduce this yesterday, so no worries if you weren't here. But the top the shoelace part of the foot presses into the ground so hard that the knee lifts. And maybe you're like, what the F? Like, that's not happening. That's okay. <laughs> you can just press the top of the foot into the ground uh, so hard that you feel the stretch here. And if you can lift, we're lifting here and we're just taking a full breath here. The legs extended long. And just a deep, deep stretch in the front hip, front thigh. And gently release that knee back down to the ground. We're going to come up to Anjani Asana Low Lunge. So just notice the shoulders over the hips. If you're up here and you're like, how do I get the shoulders up over the hips? Then just bring the knee in a bit. The right knee in a bit. It's okay if it's not your deepest stretch ever. We kind of just were in your deepest stretch ever. So it's okay to let it go a little bit here so you can have a little more stability. Turn a little bit closer to a uh, proposal, like marriage proposal pose. So just, you know, ask yourself to marry yourself. And then here's another thing that'll happen is the lower back will arch like Daffy Duck. And instead we want to keep it tucked under. Nice long spine. It may look prettier in the pictures to be all like, but we want to do what's good for our bodies instead in this class. So arms come up overhead, nice and slow. Momentum is not your friend here. And exhale, shoulders melt away from the ears. Now we've been playing with this slow motion side twist. I'm going to, you stay where you are. I'm going to turn just so that you can see what's going on here. So still left foot forward, still right knee back. Anjani Asana, deep breath in here, fingers reaching tall. On the exhale, twist left. Right fingers reaching forward, left fingers reaching back. Just as we played with before, stay here, breathing continues. And then option here to bring the hands to heart center and hook the right elbow with the left knee. So I'm hooking the elbow to the outside or top of the knee. And then the next step is to press the hand, so hands are in Anjali Mudra, prayer. We use that pressure to open the left shoulder, try and bring hands to heart center. And when I say hands to heart center, it's more like I'm trying to bring heart center to hands, because right now my chest is facing the ground. And here my chest is facing the side wall. I'm using the tension between the elbow and the knee. Remember, we're going to a point where it's challenging, but not to where it takes your breath away. So sometimes our bodies can get into a position, but it's not sustainable or healthy because we can't breathe in it. So breathing as priority, we've got another deep breath here, wherever you may be, that also might be in the high twist, the arms like the letter T. And then we release, like pressing rewind, back through this high twisted version, which is a beautiful place to be. Arm comes up through center. And exhale, hands down to frame the left foot. Ooh, 
Does this make sense? Okay. Right toes tuck under, left foot steps back for plank pose. Pressing the ground away. It's a straight line from the heels to the crown of the head. We're not in cow pose spine. We're not in cat pose spine. We're in a straight, straight line. Fingers spread wide. Full breath here. And an option to drop the knees down uh, to chaturanga. Either way, elbows press back behind you, scraping against the ribs, coming down to 90 degrees. You can release the knees down, untuck the feet, and we'll press it through for Bhujangasana. So I'm squeezing my glutes to press the hips into the ground, and then I keep my elbows bent because I'm trying to pull my body forward, like my chest towards the, towards the wall in front of me. I'm not trying to reach up towards the sky or any of that. I'm trying to reach forward so there's more length. Shoelace part of the feet pressed into the ground. We've got a full breath here. And toes tuck under. Hips press up high for downward facing dog. So fingers are spread wide. I walk the feet in a little bit to find the spacing between the feet and the hands. The closer the feet are to the hands, the deeper the stretch in the legs, the farther the feet are from the hands, the deeper the stretch of the shoulders. To find a place in the middle, unless I'm particularly working on something. Hips are pressed up and back like they're gonna touch where the back wall meets the ceiling. There's a straight line of energy from the hands up to the hips, which means no uh, angle here in the shoulder. Straight line. How do I hang, how do I do that? I hang the head heavy, I hang the chest heavy. If still you find yourself here, bend your knees, send the hips up and back. That's gonna open up that shoulder chest line for you. So the, yeah, the heels are pressing down towards the ground. It doesn't matter if they're touching, especially if your knees are bent, you're a little or a lot, your knees are not, your heels are not gonna touch the ground. It's okay, it's not a prerequisite. It's just the direction of the energy for the body to be pressing towards. You got another full breath here. And then right leg sweeps up and back behind you, toe points towards the back wall. Bend in the right knee and stack right hip over left hip. So I'm opening my hips up to the long side of my mat, towards the side wall. My knees pressing up towards the sky. Hands don't leave the ground, arms stay strong. No bend in the elbows, deep breath in, three-legged dog. And exhale, tiger pose. Knee comes in towards the nose, round in the spine like cat. Come up onto the left tiptoes and bring the shoulders up over the wrists. Right foot steps up between the hands. It's okay if it takes more than one step. Left foot steps up to meet it. Big toes come to touch and inhale to a halfway lift with hands on shins. Exhale, forward fold. And inhale brings you all the way up to stand. Arms sweep up when you get there. And exhale, hands to heart center. Inhale, arms sweep up overhead. Head tilts back to follow the hands, giving the neck a little stretch. Little baby back bend. Exhale, hands through heart center, forward fold, soften the knees to protect the lower back. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, hands down to the ground, left foot takes a giant step back. Definitely a half day, guys. It's definitely a half day. Do what we can with the wind. I don't know how Chicago winds do it, but respect. All right, so here we are in our runner's lunge. Pressing forward and back with the left heel to start getting a, a bit of a stretch in that calf muscle. Once again, if you're not feeling a stretch in the calf muscle, then notice you might have a little micro bend in the left knee and just eliminate it. Just like you're trying to get the back of your knee to touch the ceiling, which is really gross sounding now that I hear myself say it, but that's basically the, the direction of the energy. So we'll start working on the leg strength and flexibility again by pressing the right foot forward, pressing the left foot back, 
for this one, it, it's easier for me to have my hands on my knee, like on my thigh. Uh, so I'm trying to like rip them out apart, bring space between the feet. Um, that's not a rule, that's just like, for me, that feels easier. And I'm really pressing, pressing, pressing away, trying to open up the space between my legs. And gently release the hands down and release the left knee down. Just giving a breath here with the legs relaxed. <sighs> then back to runner's lunge. Now we're gonna pull it together. So right foot's pressing down and back, left foot's pressing down and forward. We're squeezing in towards center line. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Right hips pulling back, left hips pressing forward. Full breath here. And gently release left knee to the mat. So if you find yourself, you're like, you breathe way faster than me, you're like, what the, how are you, how am I supposed to breathe that slow? You find yourself holding your breath, waiting for the next time I say exhale or inhale. Just take two breaths for every one breath of mine, but stay in the pose. So you're still in the pose the same time, like the same amount of time, even if you're in the pose for more breaths, if that makes sense. All right, set it up again, runner's lunge. Maybe you found like a little bit more space between the two feet, awesome. We'll press the right foot down and forward, press the left foot down and back, and we're trying to expand, make space between, between the feet. So we're pulling apart, pulling apart, pulling apart. So yeah, we're doing lots of like strength type stuff today, but it's Tuesday, it's early in the week. We're doing great, another deep breath. You know, gently release the hands down, release the knee down. Let the legs relax for a moment. Sometimes it can be harder to tell our bodies to relax than to put in effort. Okay. Set it up once more. Runner's lunge. And now the feet are pressing in towards one another. Right foot pressing down and back. Left toes pressing down and forward. Right hip pulling back. Left hip pulling forwards. So all a squeeze in towards center. Yeah, like scissors being closed. So if you're feeling frustrated because in those in the middle when we take that like breath to relax, your body is like still super tense and you feel like you're wasting your time. No, you're not wasting it. You're just learning. <laughs> you're learning to, to take these quick breaks, these quick little uh, rests in between. Don't worry, we've only got one more breath here with a full squeeze of the legs. <sighs> Gently. Ugh, release that knee down. Maybe we've got a little bit more space. Untuck the toes, okay? So yeah, that was, and I'm only saying that because that's what was really frustrating for me. I feel like every time a teacher would tell me, okay, take this breath to rest. I'm like, I need more than a breath. I need like half an hour to get into a resting space, but it was really reflective of my life. All right, tops of the feet, shoelace part of the left foot, pressing into the ground so hard that the knee lifts, perhaps. Even if it doesn't, there's still a strong press into it until you feel a stretch on your left thigh, left hip flexor. So I'm pressing strong, letting that lift. I'm not lifting my butt, right? My hips are still pressing down to give resistance to the stretch. So it was pretty reflective of my life that I could only take rest basically when I was sleeping at night. Like that was resting for me. I couldn't take little breaks throughout the day because what would tend to happen is I would completely shut down and like sleep for the whole day. And that is not super healthy. All right, gently release the knee to the ground. We're gonna come up to our Anjanayasana, our low lunge. You can bring your hands onto your thigh for stability or work on that beautiful slow motion sweep up. Find your shoulders over your hips. That mean, might mean bringing the back knee in a little bit. Finding the spacing that works for you. Okay. Just come up overhead. So much more sustainable, much more healthy for your mind and your body is to be able to take these little breaks in between effort. And uh, how do we do that? Well, we practice it here. We'll take a nice big twist to the right. Right arm sweeps back, left arm is reaching forward. Can stay here or always come back 
to this position. Otherwise, hands come to heart center in Anjali Mudra. And we attempt to hook the left elbow with the right knee. Palms press together. From here, we're going to try to bring the chest to hands by pulling the right shoulder back, almost like you're going to open your chest up towards the ceiling. So one side might be different than the other. It is for me. And that's all right, it's just something to notice. I'm keeping this shoulder out of my ear by pressing it down. You're fully, fully breathing here, even in the contortion of the twist. So how do we practice taking smaller rests between effort? We build up this relationship with the breath. Some people are like, oh, you should be your own best friend. Like, have the best relationship with yourself. Like, what does that even mean? Well, the breath is a nice place to start. Sometimes the body can be a little bit more difficult to make friends with, especially when you're forcing it into these weird shapes. So we've just got one more breath here. Then like pressing rewind up through this high letter T twist, back up through Anjani Asana. And exhale, hands release down to the ground, left toes tuck under, right foot steps back, plank pose. Ooh, feels nice to extend that right leg. Okay, straight line from the heels to the crown of the head. Shift it forward onto tiptoes. Then option to release the knees down. Either way, chaturanga, elbows bend, not past 90 degrees. Tops of the feet flip. And then we'll press the chest and shoulders forward. This time the tops of the feet can be pressing into the ground so hard that the knees stay lifted. Kind of like what we were playing with before. I squeeze the glutes to protect the lower back and so the shoulders are away from the ears. Upward facing dog. Full breath here. Then downward facing dog. We're almost done with this flow. Everything we do on one side, we've got to do on the other. So we're just evening it out. You're doing great. This is the most heated part of class. Most strength based part, only strength based part of class. Deep breath in here, fingers spread wide, eyes stay open, looking between the knees or between the toes. And the left foot sweeps up and back behind you, pointing towards the wall behind. Bend in the left knee, then lift the leg up and open, stacking left hip over right hip, three-legged dog. Temptation here is to bend this right elbow, but don't. Keep it strong, keep it long. Shoulders more or less stay even with the ground. Lifting the knee towards the sky, we take a deep breath in. And exhale, tiger pose, knee in towards nose, rounding in the spine like cat pose. Come onto the right tip toes, bring shoulders up over the wrists, left foot steps up between the hands. Once again, it's okay if it takes more than one step. Left, right foot steps up to meet left. Big toes come to touch, inhale to a halfway lift with hands on shins. And exhale, forward fold. Inhale brings you all the way up to stand, arms sweep up when you get there. And exhale, hands to heart center. Nice. We'll turn to face one another. Good work there. That was the, the flowiest part of class. You made it. <laughs> All right, we just did lots of great like hip opening, hip opening stuff. So let's use it to our advantage here. Hands come onto the hips and the right knee opens out to the side. We're gonna drag the foot in towards the ankle for our tree pose. Just hold a little bit of balance here. And maybe the foot comes up to the calf. So the arch of my foot fits right nicely with the muscle of my calf. Tempting to go to the knee, but we stay below or above. So we don't want to put any extra pressure on that it, ACL, I believe. And the knee stays open. We're not letting the knee travel forward. Nope, we keep it back. How do we do that? Squeeze the glutes, hips tuck forward. So the opposite of a daffy duck butt. We're not sticking the butt out, tucking the hips under. Anterior posterior tilt. Here we're going for more of a posterior tilt. Really we're going for even, an even distribution in the, in the hips, but that tilt is a good place to start. So we just got one more breath here. 
It's okay if you fell out and had to come back in with the foot on the calf. Beginning again is also a beautiful practice. So slowly release that down. Left knee opens out to the side. Foot comes in to the ankle. So this is a great place to be as well. The toe is even touching the ground. You're just working on keeping that right uh, left knee open. You drag it up to the calf once again, not on the knee. If you know a different version of tree pose, you go ahead, you do your thing. And then here, notice there's going to be a tendency for the right, uh, left hip to drop down, but I'm keeping them even to the best of my ability. That's also going to help keep this knee open. So breathing here. Hands on the hips is nice to keep the, so you know that the, the hips are stable and even. The hands can also come to heart center in, in our prayer pose. This is a nice little stretch for the wrists as well. You can tell I'm kind of obsessed when it comes to wrist resiliency and flexibility, but it has served me well in my life, my friends. It has served me well. I'm going to let that go. We're going to let it all go because we're going into our lymphatic shaking part of class. So shake out the hands and shake out the legs. If you're just joining us, you've come for the perfect, at uh, the perfect time. So we're about to let some shit go. So just start to bring a bounce to the body. So you can like full jump. Or if you're not about that jumping life or your neighbors already hate you, you can lift the heels and just let them smash into the ground with the knees bent to create a little bit of that reverb. So we're trying to get the jiggle happening. We're trying to get like shake in, Shake, jiggle, all that jazz, as much as you can. So I like shaking my hands out, that feels good to me. Yodi yada, is it common courtesy? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you're, you are virtual, my friend, so you do you. Things will come up, things will come up. But in a classroom, yes, it is definitely common courtesy to keep that to yourself. All right, so here we are, shaking, shaking, shaking. Shoulders lift and drop, lift and drop. Just let the heat kind of build up. Now we're breathing in and out through the mouth. <sighs> Audible sighs, always encouraged during class, but specifically during this portion of class. <sighs> All right, we're coming into our breath of joy. It's a four part breath. And it looks like this. On the inhale, we just sip in a third of the air, arms sweep forward. Second inhale, no exhale in between, arms sweep open to the sides. Another third of the air capacity. Final inhale, sips in all of the air, full air capacity. And exhale, ha! Arms sweep back. Belly towards sides, doesn't matter if they touch or not. So it looks like sip of air in. Sip of air in, sip of air in, ha! Ready? In, 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 ha! In, 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 ha! In, 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 ha! shoulder distance apart, hand comes to the belly, hand comes to the heart, eyes can close. <sighs> I'll just take a moment here to arrive. 
and notice what was created. Higher body heat, higher heart rate, change in breath pattern, but what else? Take the body, give it a righteous shake like a snow globe. And here we are just watching where that glitter dust settles. What is revealed? And what comes up for you when you completely let go? What came up to stop you from completely letting go? What or whose judgment are you hiding from? Don't gently blink the eyes open. No judgment for me to answering any of those questions. I think showing up here at all is very courageous. So here, you might take a sip of water, towel off, if you built up some sweat. Just gonna, you don't have to change your mat, I just change it so that I can be closer to you. For our more. How does this work? There we go. Awesome, awesome. If you're already sitting on the ground, stay there. You're perfect the way you are. If not, you're standing with me. Arms sweep up overhead, deep breath in. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, bend in the knees deep, 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 till you come to seated. Uh, wow, breath of joy seriously made me joyous. Yay! Giggling to myself. That's what it's about. Sip of matcha. Oof. Sip of gen matcha. Some green tea here. It's a green tea kind of day, my friend. So we're coming down to seated. Beautiful. Ah. <sighs> So nice, so nice to start the morning yelling. If it's nighttime for you, <laughs> that's great too. This is like the first thing I do every day, so. Okay, I just wanna give the hips a stretch. How do I wanna do that today? Yeah, let's do this. I don't, wanna, I don't wanna go too late. I just wanna hang out with you guys all day and stretch all day, but I'm gonna respect your time and my time promises. <laughs> give my knees a hug and give it a roll back. Give myself a little rock side to side. It's only cute to say that time is relative or a construct when um, when other people aren't depending on you <laughs> to show up at a certain time, so I won't do that to you. All right, let the knees, uh, feet come down to the ground close to the hips and cross the right ankle over the left thigh. I'm flexing through the right foot and then use it, and the right knee is kind of pressed away. The left thigh pulls in towards the body using just core strength. So I'm using this hip flexor strength to bring that knee in towards the chest. Then the hands reach through. Right hand goes through that little like donut hole that was created. The left hand reaches around. I'm grabbing behind the left thigh, like behind the left knee, and letting this left leg completely relax. I'm going to use my right elbow to press the right knee away as I pull the left thigh in. So as this left leg gets pulled in, the right knee gets pushed away. So what I'm actually stretching here is that right hip, right butt cheek, reclining pigeon or figure four stretch. I just notice the shoulders stay melted away. We are using arm strength, but it's like a bicep curl. It's not like a shoulder tug.
So I say like with every inhale, I like pressing my right knee away a little bit more with the elbow and with every exhale, I like pulling the left thigh in. And we're just here for one more breath. Gently release the foot back to the ground, the right foot back down to the ground, then cross the left ankle over the right thigh. This left knee is pressing away using just core strength. The right knee pulls in towards the body as far as it can go. Then the left hand reaches through this triangle. Right hand reaches around on the outside, grabbing behind the knee. Let that leg relax, that foot relax. Use the left elbow to press the knee away. Use just bicep strength to pull the thigh in. Shoulders stay melted away. There's no tension in the neck or the shoulders because they're not doing any of the work. I'm using that elbow as a fulcrum. Keep the left heel flexed. So the ankle that's on the leg, that, that foot stays flexed and activated. Inhales, press left knee away. Exhales, pull right thigh in. So these aren't big movements, they're like micro movements, maybe even imperceptible to the eye, but you can feel them because you're pushing into your edge of flexibility. One more breath here. And then we'll gently release the right foot to the ground, the left foot to the ground. Bring the knees in towards the chest and drop them over to the right. And by drop, I mean gently place them over to the right. Left hip stacks over right hip. Right hand lands on top of the knees. Left arm opens up like the letter T. And you might even look over this left arm over the fingertips. The only effort in this pose is the left shoulders pressing down to the ground. So I'm trying to get the shoulder to press down to the ground, but the rest of the body is relaxed. Okay, I need this. Thank you. I'm going to do what I can do. Gout clout. Hello, friend. Welcome to class. If you've been here, I hope you've been enjoying it. So the left shoulder is pressing down towards the ground. The left hand is palms face up towards the sky. Everything else is relaxed. It doesn't matter if your knees are touching the ground. It doesn't matter if your knees are touching each other. The whole body, we've just done so much work during class that at this point, you're just letting gravity do some of the work. Just the left shoulder is pressing down. Supta Matsyandrasana, spinal twist. And the head comes back up through center, knees come up through center. Gently release the knees over to the left. Left hand comes to land on top of right knee. Right arm opens up like the letter T. It's not up over the head, it's not down by the hips. Straight out. Press the right shoulder to the ground. The head can turn to look over the right shoulder to give the neck an even stretch. Once again, everything else is relaxed. We're just letting gravity kind of do the work here and kind of easing anything in the lower back. And the whole back really is getting a nice gentle twist here. Every exhalation is an invitation, an opportunity to let something go. Perhaps some clenching in the jaw, some tension anywhere else in the body. Head comes back up through center, knees come up through center. Give the knees a little hug in, a little rock side to side. And now notice, is there any last wiggle or movement, <sighs> stretch that would make your body feel good right now? It would make you feel like you had a nice even practice that addressed all the points that called out for your attention during our first uh, grounding body scan. 
and go ahead and take a moment to just work into those spaces. It doesn't have to have a yoga name, it doesn't have to have a name at all. It's just a little intuitive movement, intuitive wiggling. And then taking your time to make the preparations necessary for Shavasana, final relaxation pose. That might look like putting on socks or laying a blanket over your body as your body temperature will lower in this next exercise. And when we come into Shavasana, it'll look like oh, yep, legs down the length of the mat. Probably you're on your mat the long ways, not the way I lay on it. I don't know why I do this, I just do. Um, our feet land at least a foot apart from one another and legs are so relaxed that the feet naturally splay open to the sides. If this is bringing any pain or pressure to your lower back, you're gonna to wanna to keep the knees bent by sticking a rolled up towel or blanket, maybe a pillow below the knees. Alternately, if you don't have a prop, you don't feel like oh, you're able to get one, bend your knees real deep, feet come wide, like the distance of the short end of your mat, and drop your knees together. So it's called broken bridge. So I'm not using any physical strength to keep my knees here, it's just gravity. And then I lift my hips and just tuck. So it's the opposite of a daffy duck butt, like the opposite of a twerk. It's like, what is it? <laughs> it's like head coming forward, lengthening the lower back and gently releasing it down. So now your lower back has a little round in it, which is gonna alleviate any tension. Otherwise, the legs are long. Palms face open to the sky. I like tucking my shoulder blades under. That just helps open the chest up. It just feels more comfortable for me and I feel more supported by the earth below. Hands land at least six inches away from the body. Palms face open to the sky. A symbol, a mudra of receptivity. Allow yourself to receive the benefits of your effort here today. Head is neutral facing towards the sky. I like giving my chin a little tuck, place my head down to find the center of the back of my head. And then the invitation is to close your eyes. If that doesn't feel comfortable for you, feels too vulnerable, whatever it might be, you can leave your eyes open and just have a soft gaze at the ceiling or sky above you. Stay laying down. I'm gonna come up to seated so that I can not yell this meditation at you, but guide you through it as well as play some Tibetan singing bowls for you, which I cannot do from reclining, but that would be cool. So here in your reclining position, in your Shavasana, we'll start just like how we started our grounding meditation with three cleansing breaths. In through the nose, and an audible sigh out through the mouth. Yay, great explanation, perfect for a beginner like me. Amazing. I think most people um, probably are beginners that have joined. And I say that, like, lovingly. Because I can't see any of you. <laughs> so we're starting this just like we did in the beginning of class. In through the nose, audible sigh out through the mouth. Highly recommend the audible part, like dramatic sigh. the breath to continue in and out through the nose that's available inviting the exhalations to become longer and deeper than your inhalations perhaps even twice as long in comparison Invite space between top and bottom teeth as the jaw hangs heavy and the tongue falls away from the roof of the mouth. 
a symbol of Chitta Vritti, monkey mind. I'm just giving that monkey mind a break. And all of the muscles of the cheeks and jaw, lips, relax. Nose and nostrils, relax. Allowing air to softly pass through like waves lapping up to shore. Eyes rest heavy in their sockets. Eyelids just barely touching. And the space between the eyebrows broadens as all the muscles in the forehead relax. The muscles surrounding the ears back and top of the head, relax. And the head rests heavy, supported on the ground. The whole body rests heavy, supported by the ground. Imagine in your mind's eye a deep blue ocean, bright blue sky. And every breath like a wave. And as the sky darkens, and the clouds roll in, and a storm begins, the waves pick up and begin to crash down, seeming chaos ensues. And yet, if we're to dive down below the waves towards the center, towards the center of that ocean, the water is still and undisturbed. us too as people have an undisturbable center, a piece at our core that is unaffected by whatever storms or chaos is happening at the surface. And that core is deeper than all of our koshas, body, energy, emotions, thoughts. All of that is surface. It's not untrue, but it's not the whole truth. Allow for everything that did and did not happen in class today. Know that 
in yoga, practice makes practice. Nothing more, nothing less. And invite your inhalations to become longer and deeper than your exhalations. Every inhale brings that awareness to the surface, front side of the body, feelings of heaviness replaced with feelings of expansion and openness. Invite some movement into the body, wiggling fingers and toes. And head can gently rock side to side. Arms reach up overhead for a full body stretch. Let the knees bend and roll over to whichever side feels natural. Landing in a fetal position. You can even use your arm as a pillow. Fully released and fully supported by the earth below you. Bring to mind any intention or dedication you set for class today. Or take this opportunity to set an intention now. And if that intention inspires you, take it with you off the mat and into the world. Allow it to affect you and the people around you for the rest of your day. With eyes still closed or gently lowered, press your hands into the ground using as little effort as possible to come up to a seated position, just like how we started class. Hands come to meet at heart center in Anjali Mudra. Eyes can stay shut. Today we practice on strengthening, uh, strengthening uh, the legs and the hips, as well as some deep, deep stretches uh, for the for those guys, including the tops of the thighs, the quads, calves. Really a leg focused day. First namaste is said silently to yourself, thanking your body for the effort it put into class, thanking your body for the miracle that it is. And the second namaste is said out loud to one another, to everyone that held this space. Namaste. Thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone who joined me for my morning practice for this practice in, in general. Um, I hope you found something that serves you. Something that's valuable when it comes to self-care or reflection. Namaste. Thank you, Bodhi. Yes, so I do um, not require, but uh, appreciate, highly appreciate uh, tips uh, to my Venmo or to that link, which will take you to my PayPal. It's not uh, mandatory, um, but you do get a link to the recording of class, so you can come back to revisit the class as many times as you'd like. And uh, the time I do have timestamps in the description, so you can just do the Shavasana at the end. You can just do your uh, breath of joy. Just do the um, beginning grounding. You don't have to like filter through like finding it. Just go straight to that timestamp. Uh, namaste, kitty snacks. Absolutely love class today. You're welcome. Thank you for joining. I'm so glad that you made it. It's awesome to have you here. Functional alcoholic, my quads. Yes. Oh, yeah. And you do boat work too, so I get it. But I was looking, I don't know. I would literally just, st I started today explaining to you guys how exhausted my freaking legs are from running against the wind. But then I was like, I just need to stretch them out. So we're just going in today. So you're a beast, you're a warrior, my functional alcoholic friend, Landon, namaste, beautiful to have you as always. Oh, let's get some, some music. Yeah, here we go.
Yeah, me too. Never been so happy for plank pose. Right? It's funny. It's all about perception. Because <laughs> plank is like a really triggering pose for a lot of people. Self included. But uh, but after those deep, deep lunges and the pulling and the pushing, man, plank is a relief. Thank you, Mel. Loved this class today. Needed it for sure. I'm glad to have provided something that's supporting you in your life. You're welcome anytime. I think this is your first time practicing with me, right? So we have quite a few uh, uh, new people today. So that's really, that's really sweet. I feel like our, our little community is growing, which is great because I literally started this class because I was like lonely and missing yoga studio culture and also coming up with excuses every day to not practice. On YouTube, Dr. Mango. Hello, hello. Uh, Mel on Twitch. Yes, my first time. Well, I I hope you had a good first experience. It was, the leg thing is pretty intense. It's pretty intense. We don't do intense every day. It depends mostly on how I feel. And if people say anything in the chat before, like if you get, I try to sign on by like 8.20, so like 10 minutes before start time. Um, and if people like say like, hey, I really need this or I really would like to request that, then I always try to do that. So sometimes, if, you know, I'll be like, oh, we're gonna do like a power yoga class. But if everyone in chat is like, I just need restorative yoga, I just need yin, I just need gentle. Um, okay, if you have no idea what like those first words are, like what's restorative, what's yin, but like gentle, I just need gentle yoga, like I can do that because I'm also here for you guys too. But I'm being honest, I definitely started this for myself so that I could feel less lonely and more motivated to get out of bed in the mornings and stretch. So <laughs> I want this to be like a reciprocal, kind of symbiotic relationship with everyone. Gout Cloud, are you still with us? Did you fall asleep during Shavasana? This, that happens, people will fall asleep. This is like a, I didn't do a full, full, body scan at the end. I was feeling, hi Howard on Facebook, hello. Um, I didn't feel like, I, not that I didn't feel like, I felt like telling my favorite ocean story during Shavasana today. I think because it's so windy and maybe because functional alcoholic is here and I know that he works on a boat because that's where we met working on a boat together. So it's like thinking about the ocean and how the wind from the ocean kicked my ass yesterday. But like an ocean story was was in the works, but I didn't want to keep you guys in Shavasana for 20 minutes and then take up your whole day. So. <laughs> All right. Of course, I'm always available to answer questions, to you know, send me a whisper, send me a, a DM, send me a message. If you know me IRL, send me a text. I answer every day except Saturday for Tech Sabbath. But on Saturdays, you can still reach me through chat during class. So I, I still go live on Saturdays. I just don't do internet the rest of the time. All right. So let's raid my friend. Oh, well, Mom, Mom Furious was here, but I feel like Isa Parvati. Yeah. Mobility is the way. Do we want to do another yoga? Do we want to rate another yoga shmeep? Or do we want to do some mobility stuff? This guy's kind of like a super badass. And he stopped in to say hello earlier. You're welcome, Richney. You're welcome, Bodhi. Yeah, let's do... Let's read Issa today. Read Issa. Oh, can't spell her name. Underscore underscore Parvati underscore yoga. Okay, so we're gonna raid Isa, who I'm kind of like becoming friends with, like which is really nice. Somebody else in the in the yoga in the fitness community. Um, she's really good energy. She teaches in German and English, um, which is super dope. And she's good energy, and she's she's studying Thich Nhat Hanh. Um, her English is amazing. So let's head on over there and drop some tigers in the chat, show her some love. Um, 
I love you very much, and I'll see you same time, same place tomorrow. Namaste. Und dann lässt du die Knie nach rechts absinken, release your knees to the right. Und dreh den Kopf nach links, turn your head to the left. Dann beginn mit dir tief zu atmen, beginn zu fühlen. Einatmen zum untersten Ende der Wirbelsäule. Ausatmen, alles loslassen. Inhale, drop the base of the spine. And exhale, release everything. Einatmen, dann mit dem ersten Kopf zurück zur Mitte und dann ein Bein nach dem anderen. <lacht> 